in the last, um, mainly I would say, 15 years, uh, brain simulation been used in order to improve uh, cognitive abilities. Um, in principle, the idea is to try to improve cognitive abilities in order to translate it uh, for the benefit of patients. But um, we and others have found that we can enhance the abilities of people without any neurological damage. Um, there is a lot of findings, some null results that are important also to take into account. And there is a good progress in the field in order to try to understand how we can provide a replicable and more genuine effects in order to um, improve both uh, those who have neurological damage, but also those who are healthy and would like to improve their cognitive abilities. Um, brain simulation is using in it would be really difficult to say all the field that it's been used uh, in order to uh, potentially treat neurological or psychiatric um, illnesses. Uh, the one that I'm uh, that I focus in this uh, in this talk is mainly attentional disorders, and more specifically ADHD. Uh, so those who have um, attention deficit hyperactivity disorder, um, this um, this disorder is characterized by both uh, problems in attention, impulsivity, and hyperactivity. And the idea is how brain stimulation to areas that we know that are associated with ADHD could improve. Uh, eventually the functions of those who have ADHD. We have actually most of our work is on healthy volunteers because it's easier and uh, to, to run such projects. And what we found is that we can improve their performance on attentional tasks, on learning tasks, um, in some cases on mathematical uh, material. And what we uh, what we found is that the improvement, at least with how to use the brain stimulation, is going to be maximal for those who have low-level attentional abilities. So not those who are really able to focus on things you know, for a long period of time, but those who show fluctuations with time. They might not be considered having ADHD, but they need this in order to, they need the stimulation in order to improve their abilities. And what we found is that when you do that, you improve their level to those who really perform very well and they even um, outperform uh, when they receive the stimulation. Now, it's not stimulation per se, it needs to be applied to the right brain regions and it also needs to be applied at the right dose. So what we also found is that if you provide too much stimulation, it's ineffective. So there needs to be a certain amount that um, is most beneficial for the individual. And we also took a next step and now working uh, together with uh, computer scientists in order to develop algorithms in order to tailor the stimulation for a given individual in order to really um, enhance their abilities in the most optimal way.